everybody, my name is Miss Danielle and I work for the Elyria Public Library System. I miss coming and visiting all of you at school, so I'm doing a school age story time today. So the first thing we're going to do is a hello song. It's called Clap Everybody and Say Hello. And we're going to sing that in English. And then we're going to sing a hello in Mandarin, which is Ni Hao. If you know how to say hello in another language, please leave that in the comment box and next month we can all sing a uh, hello in whatever languages you know. But first, the song is very simple. Clap everybody and say hello. Clap everybody and say hello. Clap everybody and say hello, no matter what the weather. Okay, next we're going to do that in Mandarin and that is Ni Hao. Clap everybody and say ni hao. Clap everybody and say ni hao. Clap everybody and say ni hao, no matter what the weather. Great job, everybody. Next, we are going to be doing a book. And the book we're going to be reading today is called Carnivores. And that was uh, written by Erin Reynolds and illustrated by Dan Sintat. And this is brought to us courtesy of Chronicle Books. Carnivores. The lion is known throughout the animal kingdom as the king of beasts. The great white shark is the most feared predator in the oceans. And the timber wolf's howl strikes terror into the hearts of fuzzy woodland creatures everywhere. But even savage carnivores get their feelings hurt. The lion tries to ignore it when the gazelles whisper behind his back. He pretends not to see the zebras looking down their noses at him. The wildebeest call him Bad Kitty just because he's eaten half the neighborhood. It hurts. It really does. The great white shark, he gets such a bad rap. All those shark movies don't help. Everyone talks about his feeding frenzies. But he's simply a fast eater. Nobody understands. And the timber wolf almost never eats little girls. That little red riding hood story is very misleading. The bunny rabbits always say, quit sneaking up on me. But he's not sneaking. He's merely a very quiet walker with vicious fangs and scary eyes. He can't help it. So it was just a matter of time before the lion, the great white shark, and the timber wolf started hanging out. Because even carnivores need to share their feelings. At their first get together, the timber wolf came up with an idea that might solve everything. We'll go vegetarian. The lion tried to enjoy his salad, but leaves and bark kept getting stuck in his razor sharp teeth. The great white shark ate nothing but seaweed for a whole day, but it left a horrible kelpie aftertaste in his mouth. And the timber wolf tried his hardest to eat only berries, but every single berry bush seemed to have a bunny inside. They realized that becoming vegetarians was a silly idea in the first place. Before long, the great white shark came up with a fabulous new idea. The disguise plan. New outfits will blend right in. At first, the lion's antelope disguise worked out terrific. Everyone treated him so nicely. But when the other antelope smelled his zebra breath, it was all over. The great white shark blended right in with the dolphins. Nobody suspected him of being bloodthirsty at all until all the dolphins disappeared. And the timber wolf kept drooling on all the other bunnies. The disguise idea was a dud, which was very frustrating, which made them all hungrier than ever. As a last resort, the lion invited the oldest and wisest carnivore he knew to come speak to the group. The great horned owl was happy to be included. What should we do? asked the lion. Everybody's mean to us, 
said the great white shark. I never know what to say, said the timber wolf. The owl smiled. It used to hurt my feelings too, but now I remind myself, I'm not bad, I'm a carnivore. Eating meat is just what I do. I'm not bad, whispered the lion. I'm a carnivore, confessed the great white shark. Eating meat is just what I do, declared the timber wolf. The wise old owl was brilliant. It turned out he was also delicious. Wait, what just happened? Did they eat the owl? I think they did. These days, things are different. The lion doesn't dread going to the watering hole anymore. When the zebras give him nasty looks, he smiles his friendliest smile and eats them. The great white shark feels much better about gobbling up everybody in sight. He knows that he's a husky fish with a healthy appetite. When the timber wolf gets the munchies, he doesn't think twice about grabbing a handful of bunnies. They have really negative attitudes anyway. After all, they're not bad. They're carnivores. Eating meat is just what they do. And that's the book Carnivores. So during our book today, we used some words that may not be familiar for, to you. One of them is carnivore. And you may have figured out by reading, listening to the book that a uh, carnivore is an animal that eats other animals. It needs uh, to eat other animals for its nutritional requirements. So let's see if you can think of some examples of carnivores. Did you think of any of these animals? We of course have the wolf, the lion, and the shark from our story today. But did you know that snakes and some frogs, tigers and crocodiles can all, are also carnivores? So that's a carnivore, but we also have omnivores. And an omnivore is an animal that eats both animals and plants. Can you think of some omnivorous animals? Did you think of people? Humans are omnivores. So are chimpanzees, uh, dogs, rats, brown bears, skunks, squirrels even, and many other animals. We also talk in the book about vegetarians. They, they're gonna, the animals are gonna try to go vegetarian. When, uh, usually we use vegetarian to refer to as people. For animals, those are usually called herbivores. Can you think of any animals that are herbivores? How about, can you believe an elephant as big as they are? Those only eat plants. Um, also cows, rabbits and deer, did you guess those? Grasshoppers, zebras, uh, goats, and caterpillars. We used a few other new words today that may not be familiar for you. Let's see, the animals were in disguise. Well, animals may not put on uh, actual costumes, but many animals do camouflage themselves. Let's see, and I have some examples here. And when an animal camouflages itself, it blends into its surroundings, either to protect it from uh, prey, from predators, or um, an animal may camouflage itself so that it can get to its prey easier. Its prey can't see it. So we have an example of a camouflaged animal right there. Let's see if you can spot the animal. Do you see the giraffe? The giraffe is right there. Next, we have an uh, animal from this story. Can you spot the animal? Yep, there's the owl right there. We have a last example of camouflage, the lion from the story. Can you believe that a lion can camouflage itself that well? Well, thank you so much for listening to the story time today, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Goodbye.